y'all <laughs> you know it's gonna be some shit when i start the goddamn video off with y'all listen i'm just gonna be real with y'all i don't know how this video gonna turn out i don't know if it's gonna have the same amount of energy that i usually have i am dog ass tired and i know the reason why i'm feeling the way that i've been feeling is because for the past two weeks i've barely been getting sleep including the weekend like i've been going to sleep extra late waking up early I don't know what's going on, and I just know this weekend, bitch, starting tomorrow, all I'm doing is sleeping, okay? I don't give a shit about what happens. I really don't, but, um, I mean, I woke up. I, I walked out the house with the wrong pants on. I forgot to put socks on, bitch. Listen, it was, it was just a goddamn lie, okay? I left my charger at work. I mean, at home, actually. So, I, I couldn't barely use my phone and look at stuff and get through the day. I'm yarning on the damn desk. Like, I'm, I'm, just, I'm it's just over it. I'm just over it. But, um, anyway. <laughs> it's just one of those times. Listen, I just pray I ain't coming down with nothing. But, anyway. I hope you guys are having a better week than I am. I mean, for the most part, my week has been going good. Like, so, I really can't complain. I'm just tired of shit. You know, that's everyday woes if you work and stuff you know and you understand but um let's just get into this video because to be quite honest it's really not much but <clears throat> that I want to discuss so I'm gonna make do with what I have um hmm so I went to the movies and I saw all eyes on me okay and I finally saw it and um yeah, I still stand by a lot of the stuff that I said. If you saw the Jada Pekin, um, you know, video about her coming out and her comments on the movie and all that stuff. Um, I get what people were saying that, you know, she probably didn't need to say it or whatever. But, yes, she did need to say it. Did I feel it would have made a difference either way? No, it wouldn't have. Um, do I actually feel like they needed to put that information in there about Jada and um, Tupac? No, because it was so small, so minuscule, and it just didn't really add anything to the movie, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, to each his own. Overall, you have um, Keith Powell. Keith Powell, not, not Keith Powell, Kevin Powell. He came out basically saying he's suing them, the people that made the movie, because they didn't get his permission to use his words, his works, or whatever, you know, um, because he used to work with Vibe Magazine, and, you know, they didn't credit him. I don't know if it was, uh, who was the one that was doing the interviewing? Was that Mario Van Peoples? He was doing the interview with Tupac while he was up in jail. Either that was supposed to be him, or whoever it was supposed to be, they used his stuff, they co his copyrighted material. So, if you don't clear up the copyright, you can get sued for copyright infringement, no matter what it is. And you can copyright any and everything. You can copyright an image, words, you know, sound, all that stuff. You know, so, um, it's very disappointing that y'all miss something so small like this that, like, come on, you have to clear everything before you can do anything these days. And you should know that, Okay. But um, he's suing because of that, and I say get your money. You probably ain't really gonna get nothing, but you do what you have to do. All right. If I ain't getting paid for it, um, you need to take this out. And to be honest, I don't know the movie. Okay, I'm not hating on the movie, and some of y'all probably love the movie and all that stuff. I will say the only person that really got to me was um, Michonne, aka. Uh, Afeni Shakur, okay, Michelle from The Walking Dead. She is a bomb ass actor, okay, and she was the best actress out the whole damn cast, okay. That was the one that I was looking forward to. Bitch, they had Marlo up in there. Y'all remember from The Wire? <laughs> I said he playing a, uh, the step daddy, but um, anyway, uh, I loved her parts in it. I love the displaying of how much of a strong black woman she was, even though she had her faults and, you know, her flaws and, you know, being on drugs at one point and then still instilling in him that you are a leader. Okay, this is what happened. You have to put this, um, you know, lead the people and all this stuff. They're going to be looking at you whether you want to or not. And don't say that you don't know how because, baby, they already are. And as soon as you get to a certain height, they're going to try to knock your ass down and do whatever it is that they can to, you know, make you seem otherwise. I, I, I like that, okay, but other than that, um, do I feel as though the movie was as hyped as it should have been, lived up to the hype? No, I don't, 
No, I don't. You don't even hear anybody talking about the movie right now. We're straight out of Compton. I hate to compare the two, but since we're talking about two California legends, you know, um, straight out of Compton came out and that motherfucker kept going number one, number one for like at least two, th at least three, four weeks. It was number one. Okay. And the hype around it was so strong, so big, and it lived up to it. Okay. This movie, I feel as though they should have had another director, another writer, who actually, you know, can give deeper insight. You know, some people were saying John Singleton should have directed it. I feel as though that happened should have happened. Or Gary F. Gray, what is his name? The one that did Straight Outta Compton. He probably should have did it. Um, and I know that they were saying that Tupac and John had some type of confrontation or whatever. But whatever. it Somebody else should have did it. Because from what I got from the movie... Um, the acting was mediocre. It was forced. It seemed rushed. And y'all been working on this movie for how long? For years. And it just seemed like y'all put this shit together in a month. That's how it, did. it looked to me. It looked as though you could have put this on um, BET and made it a mini series like y'all did in New Edition. And I honestly feel as though if they would have did it like that, it would have been so much more better. I would have been singing praises to this because it just felt rushing like they was trying to cram a whole bunch of stuff into two and a half hours and you know i i expected more i really did it wasn't a bad movie but it wasn't a good movie to me either i'm i'm neutral you know i don't care to see it again and you know to each his own but moving on from that i'm pretty sure y'all probably gonna be like it was great it was this no one went but okay that's your opinion <laughs> Y'all know I got to bust y'all bubbles a little bit. Because y'all be busting out like, bitch, no. No, bitch, you. Okay? you. That's how we talk to each other. So, it's all good. You know, for the new people that come in up in here, be like, you don't have to talk. Guess we, we, don't tell us what we have to do to each other. We've been here. Okay? We know what the fuck it is. All right? Moving on from there. Um, what else been happening on I meant to put this first. I should have put this first. Okay. Flint, Michigan. This shit with Flint, Michigan. So, Michigan just put out there that they're going to reinstate um, the fact that these people at Flint, in Flint, and if you don't know what's going on in Flint, I don't know where the fuck you been. Okay. We don't hear too much about it being spoken on in the media, but it's still happening. Over three fucking years worth of these people living in fucking squalor without water and i say squalor because if you ain't got clean water bitch what the fuck you got okay you really have to waste money on buying bottled water just to clean up just to wash your hair just to wash your body because the water is so fucking bad some of these kids out here being born with lead poisoning some of these kids being affected by it. you got people dying from it because of the poison that's up in the goddamn water all right and you want to put back in law saying that these people need to pay their water bill or else there will be liens against their homes or their homes will get taken away from them and all this stuff because of the fuck shit that this government did to them. These people probably was paying their bill on fucking time before they realized what the fuck was going on, okay? They probably thought, well, damn, this just a rusty-ass pipe. Maybe the plumber can fix it, but I'm going to still pay my bill. But then come to find out, no, with some fucked up lead in the goddamn water, and this ain't fucking right, and, and I'm getting sick from it, and you want me to pay bills for shit I can't even fucking use? Bitch, if you don't get the fuck out of it, let me tell you something. This government, from what we're seeing right now, it don't give a fuck about the people. It's supposed to be here for the people, by the people, and all this stuff, but it don't give a fuck about the people, especially poor people, poor minorities, most importantly, poor black bitches, okay? They don't give a fuck about us. They really don't, you know? And I'm just sitting like, that's trash. That is so trash. I wish I had. Now, see, you see a lot of people out here, you know, getting their money in and these celebrities and these, you know, people who got a lot of money. If I ever got on the level that I have millions upon millions upon millions of millions of dollars, bitch, you won't see me out here, you know, buying up this jewelry, being on Instagram and all this stuff and Snapchat. Lo, I got this car, homie. Look at my house, homie. Look at these uh jewelries, homie. No, that ain't what I'm on. Okay, I may buy a few sneakers. I will put that out there. I'm about because I'm a sneakerhead, bitch. And 
okay? But I will be donating, okay? If I had, I swear to God, I'd fix everything because this is re damn ridiculous. Let it would have been a bunch of white folks. No fucking shade, but let it be a bunch of white folks and they would have had this shit fixed the fuck up, okay? But when it comes to niggas and minorities, other minorities, baby, we all niggas. All these minorities, we all niggas to them, okay? So, hey, that's what happens. Anyway, and moving on from that, on that same thing, you got Colin Kirkpatrick, who, you know, they fucking him over. The NFL are a bunch of pussies, okay? The lead, they don't give a shit. They really don't. When you got somebody that's coming out speaking and um, doing peaceful protesting and, I guess, going against what they stand for or whatever, that goes to show they don't care about, you know, what's happening in the world. They just care about their bottom line and their money and all that stuff. And I guess Colin was hurting it for them, their image-wise, okay? Because I'm pretty sure he, ever since he started standing up, people was buying his shit and they was making money. But you won't, you're going to blackmail him up in a blackball him up in the um NFL ain't no teams really trying to pick him up or whatever so he said fuck this shit chuck the deuces and said bitch I don't need y'all I'm finna go out here and fight the fucking fight that I've been fighting okay for justice and all this stuff for black folks all right I, I said well damn Colin you know maybe you really got because he's been donating a lot of money um if I ever get stable enough to do something and I can live comfortably and still help and do that, then I can understand that. But, bitch, <laughs> where I'm at that, I'm about to keep this job. But I, I have to apply him because, bitch, how many of y'all would be able to do something like that? That's talking, that's that's really fighting for something, standing up for what you believe in. Okay? There's a lot of people that be on here talking a lot of talk, but they don't walk the walk. You gonna talk the talk? Bitch, you better be able to walk the walk, bitch. Okay? But, um, shout out to Colin. Moving on from that, we get some uplifting shit, you know, a little depressing stuff, uplifting shit, and now we finna go to some fuck shit, okay? Um, first of all, Brandy. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's not funny. It's not funny. Okay, let me be real, for real. Now, y'all know Brandy supposed to have been with this dude named Sir the Baptist. Um, he's some type of new artist or whatever. I've been seeing, you know, Michelle uh, Williams because I follow, I follow, actually I follow both of them on Instagram. But I don't look at Brandy shit that much. So her stuff don't automatically, get, let me tell you something. Speaking of fucking Instagram and Facebook and Twitter too because I'm tired of this shit. Y'all going to have to stop fucking playing. Who the fuck told y'all that it was going to be a good idea? To take stuff and put them in all type of disarray of order, okay? You ain't even got them in ascending or descending order. You just saying, bitch, pluck out something and you're going to put it in there. Why is it that it is, what today is? It's Thursday and I am seeing shit on my timeline from Tuesday on Instagram. As if this is, no, no, put the shit back in order, okay? Put it back in order. Why ain't nobody tell you to do that? I'm always trying to fuck shit up, trying to be new with something. Put the shit back in order. But anyway, Brandy was on there, y'all. If y'all follow Brandy on her Snapchat and, you know, her Instagram, all of a sudden she just came out of the blue just posting all these pictures about her and his boy. And I was just sitting here like, first of fucking all, something about him, I just didn't see it for him or her. I, You know, a lot of people were trying to say that he was gay or whatever. I done, that's not what I was getting, okay? I was getting that maybe somebody using somebody for something, okay? And I don't think it was Brent. Somebody was out here stunning for something. So I just really wasn't buying this relationship. And I don't want to talk on nobody relationships like that because who the fuck am I? You know, but when you peep something, sometimes you just have to say something. And I got to say something. You know, I just didn't understand, like, all of a sudden, you. I, understand, I don't get people who want to do stuff like this. You put your relationship on all display and be like, oh, and you post it like 15 times a day about this person. You know, that's that new love shit or that puffy love or that, you know, new lust. Okay, that new like. So, you want to put it out there that you got somebody, but then all of a sudden, Brandy, you're a grown-ass woman. You act, you 38 years old, okay, and you acting like you 16 and this your first boyfriend ever. I mean, whatever, it's cool, but I just honestly felt like she was doing a little too much too soon. Okay, because it just came out of nowhere. And then now um, you went from posting pictures about him and all this stuff. And now you're posting shit you can't never lose, but you never had and all this stuff. And bitch, 
this 38 up in this bitch. I said, well, bitch, if you 38 years old, you should have known better. You should have known better. He way younger than you. And somebody was saying that he had a whole ass family on the side, girlfriend and kids and all that stuff. I have no idea what's going on with that. I just know they ain't together no more. And I just know Brandy love her, okay? Because she got played by a little youngin'. All right? I mean... Sis, we tried to tell you. We tried to tell you, but you know you have to learn for yourself. You Sometimes you got to go through some stuff. Like, Brandy just ain't never been lucky in love, and that is kind of fucked up. I, I really feel bad for her. Like, everybody deserves to be with somebody that really, really wants to be with them and to live a happy life like that, you know? Y'all yeah, remember when she faked her... I mean, I'm not going to do Brandy like that. I'm not going to go back in the past. Anyway... I'm not going to do her mama. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Moving on. Better luck next time, Brandy. That bitch won for you, okay? You got something out there waiting. He going to pop up and you going to be like, damn, motherfucker, you was right here in my face this whole time. And he going to be like, sure the fuck was. I was just waiting on you to come to your senses. And you going to be like, oh, shit. <laughs> Hit him with that line. I swear to God, I will be giving y'all some gems on here, okay? Y'all need to start putting them to work. I need to start putting them to work for myself. But y'all need to start putting them to work. And y'all come back and tell me and be like, bitch, you was right. I'm like, I know I was. I know I was. <laughs> Speaking of somebody else that's fucking mad. Kendall. Let me tell you something. It was a bunch of bullshit that happened before, during, and after the goddamn BET Awards. Okay? The BET Awards was cute for what it was. It wasn't really all that. Because let me tell you something. Throughout the whole thing, that whole fucking four plus hour show, the only thing that I remember from the show is Bruno Mars, because that's my little nigga, okay, and Escape, Candy and her lack of notes, okay, um, and the new edition shit. That's the only thing, and the fact that they fucked up Scissor's performance. That's it. I don't remember anything else in between. You know, I have to go back and refresh it. But those are the ones that stood out to me, okay? So, what wound up happening before the show... <clears throat> Safari, on Friday, <laughs> all of a sudden put this in, um, this Instagram video up talking about some, you know, Meek Mills and his uh, crew, they some punk bitches. He a little punk-ass bitch, whatever. How the fuck you gonna have your crew come and jump me, bitch? How you gonna jump me? And then look at me. I'm still fresh. Up in the Roy's. Okay, look at this. The double lies in the back. You know, I said, wait a minute. Pause this shit. I had to replay it again because I said, so you mean to tell me that Meek Mill sent his crew out to handle his weight for him instead of taking care of the business himself? That was a problem in itself. And then you claim that they jumped you and that they was like, pop, pop, pop. You sucker punched me in my face. You did this. Like, they did tap him a little bit. That's what he said. You know, but the collar on your shirt ain't got nan dirt on it. The bitch ain't wrinkled or nothing. You don't look disheveled. Did you clean yourself up before you do this shit? That's what I was thinking. I said Safari got to be lying. Somebody is lying about this shit. He had on all white, baby. I thought he just had on a white shirt, okay? He said, ain't nobody snatched my jewelry or nothing. I said, you right. Them, them the, the, the chain's still there. You know niggas will snatch a chain in a minute, okay? I don't know what it is about these chains, but a nigga will snatch a chain in a minute. Bitch, I said, I need to find footage because this, this ain't clicking. It ain't clicking. Then we see one footage where he out there on the street. And then they literally chasing him. And then at one point, you couldn't really see him getting jump jump, But you see another nigga that he was talking to getting his ass beat. And I said, what the fuck is going on? Then we see another clip because Meek Mill wanted to put out this picture top about something. He was in the studio the whole time. Child, they put out another video. Meek opened up that damn door and he slowly looked like, go ahead and get him. And they went and got that nigga. Okay. But... I don't know, Safari must have ran track in uh, high school or whatever because, or the hood streets, because that nigga said, okay, what you won't do, you caught me off guard, but bitch, you ain't gonna catch me no more. I ain't got hands like that, but bitch, you ain't gonna hit me no more, okay? He got out of those clutches, he did stumble a little bit, had on all white, I mean, completely white down, and not then dust, particle, flick of nothing. Not nan rip, not one tore, not one wrinkle, not nothing. The chains were still in place. His phone was still in place. 
his wallet was still. I said, what type of bull? Nigga, nigga, let me tell you something, Nick. Let me tell everybody else something. That jumping shit is for pussies. And it's one thing for a woman to do that shit to other women, but for a nigga to do that shit to another man, that's some bitch shit. You jumping a person, if you got an issue with them, square up and fight them man on man, one on one, okay? That's what the fuck you do, all right? All right, you don't have to sing your, if you really about that and the beef is between you and him, you and him handle that shit. Not you, him, and his your crew, okay? And you watch on from the sideline. I don't give a fuck if anybody's on papers or whatever. If you ain't on papers or nothing, then you get that shit in. If you on papers, do you sit the fuck back and you wait until you get off, okay? So this shit can be fair one-on-one. -on -one. That is the most pussy-ass shit ever, if you ask me. And it's weak sauce, okay? And then for your crew not to whoop his ass and it was more than two of them, bitch, are you serious? You need to get some more boys. You need to... This disband the crew and start all over again because this shit ain't working. They are defective, okay? They are defective because, bitch, they just showed you if that shit comes down to it, they won't be able to fight your battles for you because look at this shit. That nigga walked away, okay? Not limp away. He walked away, okay? Clean. So what was the point? And who the fuck are y'all fighting over? I hope the fuck it ain't Nikki. I mean, I know y'all had words back and forth and all that shit. But, bitch, get over it. Get the fuck over it. Y'all both lame as fuck for that shit. Well, Meek, you more lame than anything. Y'all want to call um, Safari a pussy for, uh, you know, um, um, saying what happened. Bitch, y'all put the footage out there so he would have had to explain anyway. It's more pussy that Meek put them niggas on him and they still fucking lost. God damn, what the fuck? You still meeking out here, um, um, meek meal? Anyway, moving on from that. So, not Saturday, but Sunday. Okay, the awards is going on. During the awards or after the awards, we found out that the Migos, DJ Academics, and Joe Button had a little thing going on before on the little press circuit that they had before the show. I said, well, damn, it was about to be a fight. Because they had put it out there that Joe Button got beat up by the Migos. I don't feel like he got beat up. I don't even think a fight really popped off. They was about to fight, but, you know, security came up in that bitch. And, you know what I mean? I didn't speak on this when Joe was being such a bitch and a dick to Lil Yachty. Okay, I don't fuck with Lil Yachty and his music or whatever, but he's not harming nobody. And because he said he was a happy person, oh, you can't be that happy and all this stuff. It was like he was trying to find fault for anything. And it's just like he's a hating ass old ass man. That's what it comes off as. He's that hating ass uncle that's sitting in the corner just judging everybody. Okay, drunk as shit and start talking shit about everybody, but he's sober with it. Okay, I don't understand what the fuck the issue is and what this problem is. Um... We are in a new generation. You had years upon years upon years to let your career pop the way that you wanted to pop. All right. And so you cannot get in your feelings and get upset with these new ways of, you know, people who are out here making it happen, regardless of if you feel they got talent or not. Because there's a lot of them that these mumble ass rappers, these whack rappers that are making it. That's understandable to feel slightly a, a little way. But you had time. You had time, but you stood in your own way most of the time, Joe. So let's let's get that out the way, okay? You had your own issues. Let these little kids flourish in what they gonna have, okay? Because nine out of ten, the majority of them ain't gonna be here in the next five years, okay? Let them ride this way that they're on, just like you roll your wave, okay? And quit being a little bitch. Now, DJ Academic, when you ask take off, that shit about you know it's a joke saying that you know. Uh, the Migos took you off, took take off off the song and all that So we what? So I went on the song. <laughs> I said, wait a minute. I heard exactly what he said. Okay. Now people were trying to say that it was because it was loud up in there, and that's how it went, and that's why uh, DJ Academic would kept on repeating, repeating. Excuse me, what? I ain't hear you. What? Say what? No, no, no. He was doing that shit on purpose. He was doing that shit on purpose. After the second time he did it, he was doing that shit on purpose. He was trying to be funny, and it didn't cross over. And at this point, Joe was getting antsy and all in his feelings, and like, I'm tired of this. You know, we need to wrap this up. And, you know, all of a sudden, me, uh, DJ Academic saying, I'm a fan of y'all. But I heard he used to talk shit about them, but now he's a fan of them. And then Joe gets up, and he just said, fuck this shit, and drops his mic. And all this stuff. And I'm just like, 
that's how you do interviews. I don't give a fuck, like, even if you're tired of the person or whatever, you don't sit there and you don't act that way, okay? That's one. Quavo got up. Offset got up and was like, he started rolling up them chiffon ass um, cufflinks and said, bitch, what? He said, what? What? I was like, all right. They slowly got up like menacing. I said, oh, somebody hit somebody. But of course, you know, security came in and stopped that shit. It was words uh, put out there, but whatever. And then it was this clip about Joe coming out there saying that, you know, he's not the type that he don't do an interview type of show or whatever. So he not, that's not what his base on. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. And they're going to say they was sassy. What the fuck is sassy? You just didn't want to sit there with them. That's all it is. You was just being an asshole. Ain't nothing, you know, if you didn't want to interview nobody and you ain't want to do this and this ain't what you about, why, why, why did you come on the red carpet? You was there because it was free and you needed the fucking recognition, okay? That's what the fuck it was, all right? You knew you was going to start some shit. I, I think Joe planned this. Like, he knew he was going to test somebody, all right? Um, Because if that's the case, if you're not into interviewing and you don't have people that you interview on your shows and all that stuff or whatever the fuck it is that you said, you ain't had to show up. You could have let old girl and DJ Academic um, be there. You could have went back and sat in the car and waited till the show start. Any fucking way. Then after that, after the BET Awards, there was a supposed scuffle between Chris Brown's crew and the Migos. And I said crew because Chris Brown was in that parking lot. He was playing against that car like I'm trying to figure out what the fuck is going on myself. Okay. So I truly do not feel like it was really Chris Brown that, you know, they was trying to get at. From what I heard, it was somebody in his crew that bumped into the um, Migos or started some shit. But Chris was just chilling on that car and they was pulling Chris back trying to like get him away from the situation. So I'm still confused about how that shit popped off and what that shit popped off about. And, I mean, we can run jokes and say that, you know, because I guess, you know, Quavo is either really good friends or fucking around with Karushi at this point. Um, you know, Chris got something to say about it. But if that's the case, Chris needs to grow up. No one gives a shit, okay, who she's fucking around with. You're not fucking around with her. So let that shit go. But I truly don't feel like... I'm confused about that. If y'all can clear that shit up about the meek, um, not the meek, the Migos and the, um... Chris Brown situation, let me know. Okay, put it down in the goddamn comments. Khaled was in the middle of it. He just got caught up in the shit. And he had a little aside. You hear his girlfriend saying, Ah, uh, Khaled, Khaled, move, bitch, because her baby. Because her baby. Khaled looking like I wish a nigga would. I said, oh, you know. Um, But, yeah, it is quite stupid. And, um, you know, everybody going on about the Karuchi and Chris Brown being separated. First of all, Karuchi was already scheduled to come there to present. Chris Brown just so happened popped up and said that he going to perform. That's how that shit happened. So if I was Karuchi, if I was asked to be there, I would have stayed just like I did, okay? And, you know, BT did what they had to do to keep them away from each other. And I think they did the right thing. And I honestly feel like Christopher Maurice was on his best behavior. So I really don't. Like, so, cause that's why I'm like, this shit is so random with the Migos, so I, I need clarification, because the whole time, every video that I've seen of him, he's not really saying nothing, or he just chilling, like, he's just trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. So, you know, we can say a lot about Chris, but I don't really think, anyway, moving on, and speaking of that, another one of his exes, Rihanna. Rihanna said, fuck the BET Awards this year. We're going to go party up in Spain. We're going to get fucked in the uh, infinity pool. And I said, bitch, with champagnes and strawberries and a blunt. You know what I'm saying? Probably some flavored condoms and all that stuff. You know, and it's all to the fucking good. You know, she got her little Saudi Arabian billionaire prince or whatever you want to call him. Head of the Toyota car company. Okay, bitch, listen. Do you, Rihanna? Do you, boo? I am not mad. All right? Get your Janet Jackson on, okay? Kick it with him for a couple of years. Probably a little less. Pop a bun in that oven. Secure for life, bitch. Let me tell you something. Even though Janet didn't need to do that, but y'all know Janet did that, okay? Janet, and I love my girl, but that's exactly what happened. She kicked it with him for a couple of years, got married, got pregnant, and getting a divorce. All right, but um, anyway, as long as I don't, I don't give a fuck, like Rihanna's happy, okay? Go ahead and do what you gotta do, and you niggas get the fuck over it, all right? 
it be killing me how niggas be like, oh, another sister gone and all this stuff. Nigga, you was never going to get this sister, okay? You never had a chance. You never had a chance to even shoot your shot, okay? Couldn't even say shoot your shot to shoot your sh. All right? You, you never had a chance to. So shut the fuck up. Moving on from that, Kendo. Kendo fucking Isaac had the motherfucking nerve to post this post. Two of them. Talking about how Mary J. Blige's performance at the BET Award, especially the opening song, which was literally directly to and about him. She doing too much. This is for us, okay? You know, keep on playing, Mary. You gonna um, make me put the real truth out there, okay? Because I ain't never want our relationship troubles to be pra- uh, public like this. I don't understand why you keep doing this. Then gonna post another clip, another post with her picture up there talking about somehow he still love her and don't understand why she's doing this and all this stuff. And I'm sitting here like... So are we supposed to care or feel some type of sympathy, empathy, empathy or something for you? Any other fees for you? No, boo. We don't give a shit because no matter what it is, and I'm pretty sure Mary did some shit to him after she found out what he was doing to her. They probably was doing shit to each other. But here's the goddamn thing. You is a gr- you are a grown man and you are trying to take her money. You want to be supported by this woman instead of going out there making a way for yourself. I don't give a fuck if you used to a certain lifestyle, bitch. Y'all was in a marriage together, so that's what y'all supposed to do. Y'all ain't in a marriage no more. I ain't got to support your ass. And then you want me to support your goddamn mama. Then you want me to support your fucking kids then you want to support me bitch get the fuck out of here get out of here your groceries and shit no no and we supposed to care you could have kept that shit okay you could have kept that shit to yourself no one asked um so let's go on to kodak black Y'all don't ever hear me talk about this motherfucker because to this day, I don't know Nan song from him. All right, Nan song from him. I literally just found out. And the only time I ever see or hear anything about Kodak Black is because I follow the shave room on Instagram. And when they post some stuff, that's where I get all my news from sometimes, my gossip or whatever. And that's the only time I see him is when he's on the, um, in the shave room. Now, one of the times... I know the motherfucker just kept getting locked up, okay? And y'all always screaming, free this, free that. But the nigga did some fuck shit, so therefore you get your ass locked up. And then last time it was because he violated the probation. Bitch, that's your fault. Ain't no free shit. No, take your ass down the entire time, okay? You the one that violated the shit. You get out of jail. All of a sudden, you rolling around with this Star of David on your goddamn necklace as if it's a jury piece, an accessory or whatever. That was offensive as fuck to me, okay? Because I'm pretty sure you're not Jewish, all right? You have not um, converted to Judaism, okay? Stop that shit. Um, second of all, you go get your teeth done. You took them goals out. A nigga all of a sudden got some white-ass chicklets, okay? Because, bitch, I ain't never seen them. Ba- this motherfucker just turned 20 years old. And when I saw, I said 20. Oh my god, it's 19 or 20 years old. I said, what the fuck? And then, them teeth were so spaced apart. I said, who was kicking field goals between them? I said, all his teeth did not fall out when he was when he was a kid. They did not fall out. They stayed there. And if they did, they said, bitch, we're going to play any, mini miny, mo. Which one of you motherfuckers going to come back and grow? Um, Not all of us, all right? They were so spaced apart, I was so fucking confused, okay? And then he go get some diamonds on. I said... But then all of a sudden, there was this big uproar about this motherfucker talking about, and if you seen Kodak Black, and I'm so glad he cut his hair. I ain't got no no problem with natural hair and all that stuff, but the way he had his hair, it was just, he just looked dirty. He looked dirty every time he did something. And I'm sorry to talk about people like that, but in this moment and in this case, after what he said and what he did, I just don't give a fuck because what I cannot stand is when black men come out their face and say that either they don't like black women or they prefer to date or be with lighter skinned women, black women. And I say that because of the simple fact that those same dark skinned black women, brown skinned black women, um, even the light skinned black women, regardless, 
they will hold their man down, their black man down, okay, through thick and fucking thin. They will give them all the type of respect that they want or they feel that they deserve or that they should have, but they can't get it in return. But you over here participating in this old, old concept of colorism, this old concept of self-hate, you know, that's been going on and happened between, ever since slavery. We still have this fucking ideology out here about the light versus dark. And it's such a shame that we still have to talk about this and black women, darker skinned black women, brown skinned women, they don't get respect, okay? And to the point that it goes on so much that they get so much hate and disrespect that when lighter skinned women come out here and talk about the little shit that they go through or whatever and people, you know, saying, oh, I can't believe I thought you were white and what do you mix with or talking about the hair and all this stuff, it kind of, or, you know, they constantly getting hit on about this, whatever, you know, to uh, other people that kind of fails in comparison to what darker skinned women go through. And at first I was a little like taken aback by that, but then I'm looking at it and I said, well, I get it. I fucking get it. And then you get a coon ass bitch like this that come out here and say some shit like the, what he said. I, and he kept on saying it's his preference. And I'm the main one who I always say, you know, it's your preference. And I understand that you can have this and you can do this and you can do that. That's understandable, but it's just the way that he said it. And then stuff like this, this is one of those things that you just keep to yourself, okay? You just keep to yourself because there is no justifying the reason and the way that you say that I will never date or I don't fuck. I fuck a black bitch, but I don't want to date her, marry her. I marry me a light-skinned bitch or, or a Latin girl or a white girl or this or that, the yellow girls. And I said, first of fucking all, that's offensive as fuck too. Okay, calling a bitch a yellow girl, like, what the fuck? Come on. That's how ignorant you are. Your mama didn't raise you right. You didn't, you, you weren't paying attention in school or your school didn't teach you right. Your parents didn't teach you right because you wouldn't come out your mouth saying this shit. I want to know how your mama look because if your mama is a brown skinned woman, please don't have no siblings, okay? Because listen, no female siblings, no, no, no woman in your family. They ain't all light skinned because nigga, look at you. You ain't nowhere near light and you can tell that he has a problem with his own color, okay? To say some shit like that, he has a problem with his own color and then to get mad that the women come at him and even some of the men came at him um, under his comment that you delete your IG or whatever. You put this little post up saying I said what I said. Basically his Nene Leakes voice I said what I said from whichever you can decipher from it but then you delete your IG account because of it. Like you, you, you when you are in the spotlight or you're trying to get in the spotlight and you're trying to reach a certain level. There are certain things that you may think and you may feel and you may do in private. And they should stay private. Because once you start putting your thoughts out there and your real feelings out there, you start alienating a whole bunch of people, a group of people that probably support you. You probably have, he probably got a whole bunch of dark skinned, brown skinned women. Because that's who be um listening to this shit. Music basically is women shit. I'm, I'm just going to be honest. They the one that really buy the music and flying over and buy the tickets or whatever. You know, you got niggas that do it, but you see women who are really out there going in for these men and these artists or whatever that come out no matter what they look like, no matter what they sound like, they support. And you put out there that you would never, you a fucker bitch. That's all she good to is just to get your dick wet. But you would never date them. You would never claim them. You would never do no shit like this. But bitch, you just alienated a whole bunch of people that probably thought that they had a chance or supported you because you were a black man. And they were all that, you know, like you just, you put your own foot in your mouth. Okay. And see, this is how fucked up the music industry is. These kids, these kids, and that's exactly what it is. These kids and these people, they come into this industry and they have no guidance. They have no public relations. They have no, no, no one on their team that is trying to guide them in the right way to do things. Okay. They, they have no media training. Where are the Joe Jacksons and the Matthew knows as much as we don't give a fuck about both. Okay. They, they, they had their people in order, okay? I mean, they ain't had their own lives in order, but they are this media fucking trained, okay? What the fuck happened to that? Let's go back to the days of Motown when they actually took time, you know, to prep these kids about how to interview, what to say, what not to say, and all that stuff, you know? And you wouldn't have stupid shit like this. 
Okay, I just can't. I just can't. But see, this is what y'all be listening to. Because I swear to God, I look at him and I'm like, nope. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, he looks a fool. He looks a fucking fool. Any fucking way, moving on from that, I just can't stand it. I can't stand it. Let me tell you something. My darker skinned women, my um, brown skin, my caramel, mocha chocolate Okay, buttercream, 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 pecan. All right, even my little vanilla squirrels. Y'all are everything. Everybody, all fucking. I mean, that, that is the fucking beauty of fucking black people in general. Okay, we are so many fucking hues of black, so many shades. All right, we come in so many fucking colors, and they are so fucking beautiful. We ain't just one pale ass color, bitch. We in all shades. And you are all fucking beautiful. And I just want you to fucking know that. Don't let what one dumb ass bitch say, okay? If you want to wear your hair natural, wear your motherfucking hair natural. If you want to perm that shit, perm that shit, lace front that bitch up. You know, fake ass baby hairs and all, okay? If you want to do all that shit, bitch, make it look good. You want to do a body, bitch, make it look good. You want to come out with a certain goddamn fucking makeup on your face, put that shit on and you wear that shit fucking proudly. You got dark skin, you got brown skin, bitch you got light skin you better go out there and you better wear that proudly and you better say and what i'm fucking here you don't never let no motherfucker get you down for some bullshit that they say because they ignorant as shit and you already got the advantage on that anyway moving the fuck on i just can't stand shit like that i really can't like who raised you pack of fucking wolves bitch and who raised this bitch right now jocelyn hernandez okay listen if y'all been watching Love and Hip Hop, y'all seen the little confrontation that, you know, Stevie J's daughters and um Jocelyn had. And when she was sitting down there talking to Mimi, she said that the relationship is toxic. She is toxic for her father. They are both toxic for each other. And that's what she was referring to. And what was the lie? Okay. The girl has a right. You know, people are getting this whole situation where they was talking and all this stuff and everybody want to say well she needs to stay in the child's place or whatever let the father handle this stuff she don't need to be involved when you bring in my siblings and when your action starts to affect my siblings and myself that's when i become involved in this relationship okay so the girls they had every much right to become involved all right everybody want to go off and say well Jocelyn didn't really say this and all this stuff it was Mimi cousin that put those allegations out there they both did it she did it at first Jocelyn came out and put some more shit and kept on talking about it and then the cousin came out and said some more shit about it too and then it came out to say that both of them bitches was in cahoots and then it came out and said that they was lying okay that's what it was and that's because cousin was bitter because Mimi fired her ass as being a nanny all right and Jocelyn was just on that shit bitch okay it don't matter who started it the bitch participated in it okay you participated in it and you are the public figure and the main head that everybody see so of course we're gonna go to your ass all right but then you keep on you keep on saying shit like this all right you gonna t- tweet that girl and say that i run she just married because i run her father and the little bitch need to go and find another cock to suck nappy headed ass here's my fucking thing bitch you literally just got people coming off your ass for coming up and participating in these fake ass allegations that uh, Stevie J was molesting his kids. And that is the main reason why these girls don't give a fuck about your ass, all right? And they have every fucking right. And then you're going to come back out and sexualize a father and daughter relationship yet again. Saying that this girl wants to suck her daddy cock. Because that's what that means. Her, who the fuck says cock? Dick, bitch. Dick, okay? That's what I'm comfortable saying. Say dick, bitch, okay? This is just something like that. Anyway, like, who does that? Who, what in your right mind said that that's okay? And I'm like, where's Savannah mama at? Because at that moment in time, Savannah, your mama up in Philly or whatever the fuck, I will be getting on a goddamn plane and be like, Stevie, you better hide that bitch because I'm on my motherfucking way and I'm coming with razors ready, all right? Because she would have got sliced and cut the fuck up. And then you got people that probably want to defend Jocelyn and be like, well, the little girl, no, no, ain't no well shit, 
all right? You don't say nothing like that. And then to call her nappy head, bitch, you's a black African-American, a black Puerto Rican. That's what you are. You are Afro-Puerto Rican, bitch, all right? You got nappy head too, bitch, Chanelica Benacourt, bitch, whatever the fuck you want to call your goddamn self, okay? You ain't looked like you looking now when you was growing up. No, the fuck you did. You had a fucking natural too, okay? So get the fuck out of here. How dare you go for her head, okay? I can't stand that shit. Bitch, y'all got the same fucking texture, okay? Get the fuck out of here with that. And y'all be defending this, like... I admit, she be funny sometimes, but this is something that I just can't. I just can't. Like, that's disgusting as hell. Why are you sexualizing and thinking that she, uh, like, who does some stupid shit like that? Who does Jocelyn? Jocelyn and Stevie. She already putting it out there again that you pimping and all this stuff. And you know what? I blame you too because you allowed this stuff and you created this monster. You helped create this monster. And when I say help create, it was already there. You helped bring it to the surface. And you help it get to the point that it's gotten to. And you keep entertaining it. And now you're stuck with it for the rest of your life because y'all got this child. And I feel sorry for the little girl. People want to say, oh, you know, you have a baby. You change and all the shit. No, the fuck you don't. Okay, because two people in the industry done already showed us that. Her and another person. I already gave him props, but I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to crash this. I ain't going to come down on him like that. He trying for right now. Okay? But listen. No. No. That is not fucking right. That is not right. You're trash for that. You are fucking doo-doo trash. Okay? I want to hit her in the face with a wet diaper. Like, bitch, what you do, it, you don't do no shit like that. Okay? <laughs> and then saying she 18 years old. She If she want to ditch it out, she should be able to take it. I said, first of all, you need to go back to Rosetta Stone and you need to go back to Hooked on Finance because it's dish it out and not ditch. All right? No, you don't do no shit like that. You don't do no shit like that. You can come at the bitch, but that was one comment that you didn't need to say. <laughs> Who wants to suck that? What type of relationship? M Jocelyn, fuck. What the fuck would happen in your life that you always going to sex and stuff like that? Molestation. Was she? I'm pretty sure she was in something like that. She was raped at one point. That's probably why. Girl, I don't... <clears throat> Anyway, moving on from that, speaking, listen, and speaking of another bitch that would have got fucked up, Jackie Christie, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't review this shit, but I catch it, okay, and I caught what she called, um, um, she needs to build a whore bitch, uh, uh, Evelyn daughter, now see, this is why I never understood, I don't understand why Evelyn is back on this show, and on this current episode that came on this past Monday, Everything that Yolanda, y y Yolanda and Oprah then told her or whatever, it went out the window. And it would have went out the window with me too. Because, bitch, what you won't do is say, well, I don't have to repeat what the internet is saying about your daughter being a builder hoe. I mean, that's just what the internet is saying. But then you said it again and you said it again because that's what you think. And that's probably 9 and 10 what you said. Because I ain't never heard nobody say nothing about her being no builder hoe. Y'all point that shit out if it did happen because I just don't... <laughs> And I be on the blogs, bitch, okay? But um, calling her a bitch and all that stuff. You know, Evelyn getting pissed off that she got called a bitch in front of her daughter. Girl, your daughter grown as hell. She probably called you a bitch too. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But whatever. But that build the whole comment and then Jackie getting pissed off that she called you a bitch. Bitch, girl, get the fuck out of here. Evelyn walked away. She had to walk past Jackie to go out that restaurant. Bitch, do you know? I would have took one of them knives and stabbed her dead in her throat. I really would. I would have been going to jail that day for murder. And I would have been like, yeah, bitch, I did. It blocked me the fuck up. You would not, okay? You would not. I just, I just fucking can't. I cannot. <laughs> Jackie has always been trash to me and will always be trash to me for that. And then want to uh, think people, girl, you, you give people reason why to say the shit that they said. Oh, okay, because Evelyn came out and said, you know, um... Go take care of your grandkids or whatever. You can't really get mad at Evelyn for saying something like that because that's what everybody's been saying. She ain't saying nothing that, I mean, well, I guess, but your daughter put that shit out there about you. It ain't like she made that shit up. I'm just saying. Anyway, they should have brought her daughter onto the reunion. That would have been some shit. Anyway, moving on from that. Um, The last thing I really want to talk about. I hope you guys get into uh, Irv Gotti's new show on BET called Tales. The, it's like a hip-hop, you know, they acting out some of the hip-hop songs. The first episode came on this past Tuesday, well, this Tuesday, this week. It was a two-hour episode. 
Um, and it was called Fuck the Police, you know, NWA song and a whole other uh, artists who have had the song um, basically saying the same thing, Fuck the Police. But it was NWA. And I already wanted to see it. And when I watched it, I really thought they was going to be acting out the song song. But bitch, they did that and then some. I said, err. This was a good ass show. It had me so fucking into it. Like, you had Boris Kojo playing this prosecutor. And he was at the beginning prosecuting this case about this black teen who got killed by some white cops. And then it was like, you know, what would have happened if um, the boy was white? And the whole story flipped. So instead of it being black people up in the projects in this housing complex, it's the white people. And the black people are in charge and everything. And the black bitch wind up crying, raping, doing all the stuff that you know white people usually do. And the blacks don't give a fuck that another white kid and got killed and all this stuff. It, I was sitting here like, Irv, you would not do that. That shit was good. That shit was so fucking good. I'm sitting here like, wow, Irv. I didn't expect this. I didn't expect this. I will be tuning in. Not this coming Tuesday because it's 4th of July and just about anything that comes on on Tuesday won't be coming on until the following Tuesday. So, I will be tuning in to that and I'm pretty sure you can catch the replay because y'all know BT replays every goddamn thing. It's probably coming on tonight. Okay. Um, y'all can play, catch the rerun, the re-airing and tell me how y'all feel about it. If y'all watched it, let's discuss in the comments. Okay. Because I actually liked it. But, um... Yeah, that's all that I really wanted to talk about tonight, well, today. And um, I really hope you guys enjoy your um, 4th of July weekend, actually. Because 4th of July is on Tuesday. I don't know if some of y'all going to be off on Monday and Tuesday, but I'm off on Tuesday. So, hey, um, it is what it is. Y'all be safe. Y'all know what 4th of July means for us niggas, but, you know, pop your fireworks just because you off. That's all I'm going to say. But y'all be safe with it. And I will see y'all later. Peace.